What is bootstrap historical simulation? It's not a form of torture. It's really one of my favorite approaches to measuring risk. To illustrate the bootstrap historical simulation, I thought I would pull actual stock prices, that is daily price closes, for three stocks that I happen to own. I've been happy with all three of them, Apple, Applied Materials, and Hewlett Packard. Earlier this year, Yahoo disabled its finance API, which a lot of us used. No worries, because Quandle publishes a fabulous add-in, and I'm using one of its functions here, Q-Series. I think it's really cool. And it allows me to dynamically retrieve price closes. Here's daily price close for Hewlett Packard. Over the month of September 2017, I've collapsed the interim rows just to keep the presentation small. But I've got about 21 trading days here. And for the month, all three stocks. And we'll just imagine that that's my portfolio, an equally weighted portfolio of Apple Applied Materials and Hewlett Packard. I'll show you how easy the... Uh, bootstrap historical simulation is. And I start by just indexing the daily returns. I use that very simple natural log function of the price relative or wealth ratio. So that's the natural, just the natural log of the ratio of change. That's a continuously compounded return. We can also call that a log return, right? So that's gonna give me a month of returns for each of the stocks daily returns. And if you watched my previous video, you know that basic historical simulation is really straightforward, right? If this is an equally weighted portfolio, then I can average these and I get here a series for the month, say, we can have any length of window that we like. So this, this would be a short window actually. A more realistic window would be a full year, 250 trading days, or two years, 500 trading days. But here I only have a uh, 21 day window, the basic historical simulation just takes these returns, sorts them from worst to best, then looks down that list to answer a question. For example, if the question is 95% VAR, what's the worst expected loss with 95% confidence? It's going to be the return that's at the bottom or near the bottom of that sorted list. Basic historical simulation, so very straightforward. This is bootstrap historical simulation and is actually, in general, an improvement over basic historical simulation. So this is bootstrapping. And the key idea here is random sampling with replacement. So what I need is a random number from 1 to 21 in this case because I have 21 days in my window. Excel can easily do that for me, right? I use the RAND function to generate a random uniform variable. So that's going to be between 0 and 1. I multiply by 21. I take the integer and I add 1. That'll give me a random number from 1 to 21. And so that is essentially an index. Because in the bootstrap now, we're going to simulate forward over as many days as we like. And again, I'm going to keep this simple. And I'm going to simulate a 10 days forward because I'd like a 10 day VAR, which is actually very common um, in terms of market risk and stock prices, for example. And there's, so there's a regulatory precedent there. So I want a 10 day VAR. So imagine we're first going to simulate forward one day. So that's really to tomorrow. And I get the first thing I need is just a random number. You can see each time I rerun this, I get a different random number. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this until I get a low number so it matches one of my, there we go, there's a three. I get a random number of three, that's my index. In the bootstrap, then I take the three and I go back and look in my historical window and I look up that day. See, that's the third day of actual returns in the month of September. So you can see with a VLOOKUP function, I just retrieve those returns. Here's the negative one. Here they are right here. It's this row. Yeah, bolding doesn't change my random. That's good. And you can see how my random number go, allows me with the index to go back and retrieve that day's actual returns. Then I go forward to the second day and I have a different random number 
and this random number is seven, it's going back, we can't see it here, and retrieving the actual returns on the seventh day. And then here on the third day, my random number is 20, and so you can see it's pulling those actual returns on the 20th day. So this is a simulation going forward in time, but it's using an index to retrieve the actual returns, and it's random sampling with replacement. And the with replacement means, I'm going to run another one just to show you an example. There's the with replacement. In this simulation, on the third day forward, I, I pulled a random number of 19. The with replacement means that it can come up again. I'm only going 10 days forward. That means we can encounter the same index value more than once. And in this case, there are some days we won't retrieve at all. So that allows me to simulate forward 10 days. And then now if I have a portfolio here, and I rounded to keep it simple, the current stock prices, but these are pretty close. And if it's equally weighted, then I have a, I have a portfolio as of today worth $237 if I have one share in each and see how simulating tomorrow, all I did is take the simulated returns on 20th day, there was no change, and I apply them to my actual portfolio values, right? So then I go forward two days, and I have actual, I'm have i taking the, the random draw from the historical window with replacement and applying those returns to my actual portfolio value. In this way, I'm taking a current portfolio value here, starting here, and simulating it forward over the 10-day period each day based on a random retrieval from last month's series of actual returns. And so I get to the final uh, 10th day here, and I have a new portfolio value based on that simulation 10 days forward. What I just ran is one trial. So I'll go down here, and I've collapsed a lot of cells, but I've repeated that 10-day simulation 10 times, which gives me 10 trials. Here's the first trial, the second trial, the third trial. Each trial itself simulates 10 days based on this random sampling with replacement that is the bootstrap. And that gives me 10 trials, 10 simulated portfolio terminal values for my portfolio in the future. Then I just take that same, remember this is bootstrap historical simulation, so I've done the bootstrapping, now I just do the historical simulation. I take those trials, I sort them from worst to best, and at the bottom then I'm going to have my value at risk, or near the bottom, depending on how many trials and my confidence level. I only have 10 trials here, so actually in this case, this negative 5.1%, that is the answer to the 95% VAR question. In other words, based on this approach, with 95% confidence, my worst expected loss over 10 days is 5.1%. Uh, so that's the bootstrap historical simulation. Just real briefly, one of the key advantages here, aside from uh, better estimates with lower standard errors, you might notice is because we're going back to last month and pulling the set of daily returns for the portfolio, right? We're preserving the cro what I would call the cross correlation on that day. Day to day, we're not capturing correlation because we're going back and pulling a different day. But the cross correlation, if these stocks tend to move together, on the same day, that's getting preserved because we're pulling each day together. So an interesting advantage of the bootstrap historical simulation. Thank you.